Operation Vagabond Falcon Part 11. This video is done in conjunction with TCI Suspension and Eckler's Automotive and Max Tools because it concerns primarily the installation of a Ford Falcon Ranchero IFS front suspension kit and rack and pinion steering. No step-by-step -step video exists explaining how to put one of these things in, particularly on Falcons. Most people just do Mustangs. Anyway, here we go. Step one, use a plasma cutter to cut out the shock towers. Before you do this, you you see that bar going on the top there? You need to make your own temporary Monte Carlo bar because removing the shock towers makes the front of this car all wonky. You have to temporarily brace it on top because you're taking the last bit of bracing out of the car. Cut from the inside, cut from the outside, you'll probably be doing it both ways. It's best to cut right on the seam here as you go around. Bruce is using the very technical don't look at it technique. <laughs> But you can use the edge of the seam there where the shock tower meets the inside of the engine bay wall. Just cut right along there. Best to cut too narrow than too wide because you can always cut out more. Can't go back. Don't need these anymore. Now grind it all out and make it smooth. You can carefully use an impact hammer to get rid of that extra metal from the shock tower that comes out over top of the frame rail. More grinding. More air hammer. More air hammer. More grinding. More grinding. Smooth. Now you can mock up the frame braces. You see, with the first generation Falcon, those frame rails there are very weak. Maybe with 1963 it was different and those things could handle a V8 in the front, but particularly 1960 and 1961, those are weak frame rails. The suspension kit comes along with frame bracers. You're going to have to strengthen the frame rails right here where the cross member is going to go. Use a Sharpie and put a mark where they're going to be. You should also label them driver and passenger so you know which side they belong. Now take the bracers off because you need to fill in the seam that's on the outside of the frame rail. You see, when Ford made these things in the 60s, the frame rails aren't complete. They aren't a complete square. There's a seam gap on the top. Now, normally that wouldn't matter because those shock towers are there adding brace, but we've taken that out. So you need to fill that in with a welder and more grinding. There you go. That's good and smooth. You're gonna have to get all the corrosion out or else when you weld on this, the welder is gonna pop and carry on. The next day. While Bruce is doing other things, I'm scraping up the sound deck deadening, the half a century old sound deadening that's on the floor of this Falcon. Most of this stuff, particularly on the driver's side, had rotted away, and we're going to replace it with more modern sound deadening. And I can also see if any rust is beginning to eat its way through the bottom of the floor pan. Since we're going with a B&M Mega Shifter, we no longer need this little doodad on the end of the steering column, so that comes out. Oh crap, fire! No one saw that? Okay. We don't need this shift lever either. And that comes out just with a punch and you can wiggle it out. This steering bearing was made for us by Matt Peterson. This is relevant to the TCI suspension and rack and pinion kit because there was no steering bearing in a 1960, 1963 Falcon because it had a worm gear, you know, a reciprocating ball steering way at the bottom. That was the bearing. So you need to get a sealed bearing in here and you need to have it fit perfectly into the steering column. Now, the TCI suspension kit doesn't come with one. You're on your own to find one. Your steering shaft, your stock steering shaft, is 3 8 so the bearing needs to be at least that, or rather it needs to be exactly that. But then, since the steering column tube is an odd shape, you're going to have to have a little spacer made to go around that. They don't tell you that in the kit, but that's what you're going to need. The next day, the frame braces line up with the bolt holes, but not all of them, because you need to make some. You may have to trim off some more edges of the remainder of the shock towers and now clamp the braces in place. The braces have holes for an extra bolt to go through, but you need to drill a hole through the stock frame rail. You need to do it on both sides. The bolts come in the kit, you put them on through, and don't forget to fill in the seam on the opposite frame rail as well. Line up the bracers with the bolt holes, drill again for the passenger side, and put the bolt through. With the bolts in, you can now start tack welding the bracers in place. The bracers come with cutouts on the top on the inside for you to weld in rosette welds for further strengthening the frame. Weld all the way around all the sides. And of course, when you're done, grind. Now bolt in the guide plate on the most forward bolt hole. This provides a guide to line up the cross member. Those guide plates need to be perfectly 90 degrees with the frame. The cross member is made intentionally just a little bit too large because a lot of these frames had flexed over the years, so they give you that extra working room. So when it goes in, don't be surprised to find that it may be too large. That's fine. 
That's expected. You need to guide it and trim it down. Then test fit it again. You find out it doesn't fit. So grind out some more and grind out some more. Then you find it doesn't fit yet. And you grind out some more. And then you find it doesn't fit yet. So you grind out some more. Then you find it doesn't fit yet. So you grind out some more. And then you find it doesn't fit yet. So you grind out some more. Oh, doesn't fit yet. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, there it goes. See? Snug. It's in. Now you need to keep tapping it and using your T-square to make sure that that cross member is directly 90 degrees in relation to the guide plates. You can't go by the ground because you have the car jacked up and it's probably on jack stands anyway, so it has to be 90 degrees to the frame. Then you can tack weld it in and then check again. Look at that. Next time on Operation Vagabond Falcon, we continue putting this TCI front suspension in.